so the um, assignment for me today is to speak on the subject of what is your assignment and uh, I guess we're speaking as a body as a church uh, faith city and uh, I guess we're asking ourselves what is our, our assignment when I say ourselves is every one of us on this platform we're all asking what is our assignment Heavenly Father, I thank you, less of me, more of you. We thank you for even this opportunity. We pray, Lord God, that everything that will be said and done will be done to your glory. And we will not leave you out. We'll give you the glory in all things. Bless us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, I'm a very melodic, um, melodical uh, guy that when I'm asked to do something, I always try to Methodical, sorry. I would always like to try to carry out the task that has been asked of me rather than going. If I feel God sending me in another direction, I will. And, uh, and I'll explain that. But I always like to hit on the task that I have been given. And this falls in line actually with the assignment today. The theme of the assignment is to denote what is your assignment. And it's key thing because I think many churches, and I think this should be something that should be etched into every single church, that when you join a ministry, when you come into a church, as much as you're being saved and being baptized and bringing your families in and you're blessing your children and getting married in these churches, I think that the cornerstone of every one of these churches there should almost be a contract that is made between the individual and the church. You can call it the, uh, the leadership or the pastor or the apostle, whatever it might be. But I also think fundamentally there should be uh, uh, an agreement based upon your assignment. And, uh, and I think that would be fundamental because people come into churches and they come and they go and they almost have no accountability to fulfill or to do anything in that church, but to just come attend the services, give their offerings. And then when they're ready to go. And uh, I think people underestimate us as pastors that we don't see it coming <laughs> when people are leaving we literally see and know when it's going to come. And then we get that little call to the side or that phone call and they say, uh, is it okay if I can speak to you, Pastor? If they grant us that uh, favor of saying, we'd like to speak to you. We always know, we always see it. But I believe before that actually happens, I think there must be some kind of agreement with every individual moving forward when you join the church because it holds you to commitment uh, everybody wants the pastor to fulfill his commitments. Everybody wants the leader of the brotherhood department to fulfill his commitments, everybody, or their commitment. It may be a woman, <laughs> ladies' departments, youth departments, choirs, and whatever it is that we're in, the intercessory department. We want them, those leaders, to fulfill their part of what they've been called to do. But oftentimes we don't want to fulfill our own, which poses a problem. And so, when looking at the subject today, denoting what is your assignment, I've just taken literally from the dictionary, and I want us to listen and understand for those of you who are taking notes, uh, to understand, to denote an assignment is a task or a piece of work allocated to someone as part of a job or a course of study. So that's very simple and straightforward. You can be set an assignment or body of work to do, or you yourself can be sent. You can be the assignment. What is interesting with this is, if we just look at it in its natural form of what it is saying here is, we have been set a course, set a task to, con to, to fulfill or given a job or a course of study. When you go to university, uh, you are asked to do assignments. And at the end of a certain uh, period of time, let's say two, three months, you have to 
to fulfill your assignments, one or two assignments, and you have to complete these assignments. If you fail that assignment, then the next thing that you have to do is you can request for a reset or you'll be given a reset to reset the same assignment because the assignment was given to you for a purpose in order to acquire the degree at the end of the term or in the years or whatever the time is, three years. You have to fulfill every single assignment and pass. If you fail to pass that ex assignment, you will either be removed of the course or you have to start it all over again. And nobody wants to start all over again. There was a song they used to sing. I think it was uh, Andre Cart start all over again this time. It will never end. But it's important to fulfill our assignments so that we achieve and move up the line to the next level. If you do not pass this first level, you cannot go into the next level. However, it just seems in church, in Christendom, Everyone wants to go to the next level without qualifying from the first level. And somebody ought to say amen on that. Number two, the second part of this, when I looked it up, it says the act of assigning something or the assignment of a task. Number two, it says a position, post or office to which one is assigned. And it gives an example that a lady has been assigned. She was uh, to be assigned to the embassy of India or embassy of America or go to a certain, as you have to go to a certain place, you can become the assignment, a specified task or amount of work assigned to or undertaken as if assigned by authority or homework project or something like that. We all have specific assignments then from God. When we came to faith, we must uncover what our assignment is and how to complete it with God's help and to be a blessing to the body of Christ from where we are placed and positioned. You can be placed somewhere, but positioned somewhere else to fulfill something else. So when we come to faith, when we give our lives to the Lord and we join churches kingdom houses there are specific things that god himself will give to each of us we uh, he gives it to us he speaks to us whether in spirit in words we start finding our place when i i keep saying when i went to ruach i remember when i joined there as a member back in 1996 it was i i believe it was may 1996 i was visiting the church before and I joined and I sat in the membership meeting and they were going through the members meeting and they were going through the tree that they have. And um, they were talking of all the different ministries that they were doing, that there was working in, and none of them ministered to me. None of them was of any interest. Um, I don't care what you call it. Pray intercessors, not interested. Uh, 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 evangelism, I wasn't interested. All of these other departments, I wasn't interested in any of them. The only one that plucked my attention was uh, restoration. Why? Because that was my assignment. That was my gifting. That was where I found that I could be of benefit to. And so for me, it plucked up to me. God will always speak to you from where you are and where he wants you. Some of you can come in a church and you can be angry at the choir. You don't like the choir. I don't like the way the choir looks. The choir should be all in robes. I don't like the way they should be in a uniform. I don't like the praise and worship, how the way they all stand. I, I, don't, I think they need to practice more. These things constantly knock you and upset you and make you angry. Those are often indicators to say that that's a part, a department that maybe you should be working with because God doesn't show us the problems unless we're part of the solution of the problem, amen. And so God has a specific assignment for every believer that joins the body. God has laid out a road map for you to be successful in his plan. And he has given you, his Holy Spirit, because many people don't understand the, the uh, behavior of the Holy Spirit and what it's for. Many people just think it's for speaking in tongues and getting under the unction, but it's more than that.
uh, what it is, is a director. It's a guide and it will guide us to your divine destination. And so the only way to be sure of completing your assignment is through constant fellowship. I'm just laying out the map here. Constant fellowship with God. And this is in our secret place. He that abideth, dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So he will be able to guide us. He will be able to teach us and lead us. Never rely on your own strength because one minute you're up and another day you're down. And we operate, uh, I was going to say something, but I'll leave that alone. We operate emotionally a lot of the times. Some people are emotional, some people are analytical, some people are just very focused. And because people move by their emotions often, uh, if our leaders was led by emotions, we wouldn't have churches like we have today because sometimes they don't feel very nice. Sometimes the people are not very nice. Sometimes they just don't feel like working with people because uh, especially church folk, they can be some of the hardest, difficult people in the world to deal with. And, uh, and sometimes I was having a conversation. I uh, was blessed to be uh, uh, in attendance of my son's graduation on Friday in Derby. He went to Derby University and the time seems to have flown so quickly my eldest son, TJ, and uh, uh, he picked up his graduation and uh, he looked amazing and we were so proud as a whole family. We all went down and celebrated this with him and he was so focused. And it's funny because I was having a conversation with him about a month ago uh, after he'd finished and had submitted his final piece and his dissertation. And I said, so what are you going to do now, son? And he says, uh, I'm going to get a job. So I said, okay, he, he studied finance and, uh, and he's passed. And, uh, and so I said, so how are you going to get into it? He says, I don't know quite right. So I said, okay, I got some links because I used to work in, uh, as a financial advisor years ago, I still got some links and uh, I'll, I'll connect you, connected him with somebody. And they said, great, we're looking for somebody just like you. And uh, they opened the, the, the floodgates for him then he was with a friend of his and his, his, the, the friend's mother says, I've got a connection with somebody, asset management and so forth. And he just became overwhelmed with like, oh gosh, I didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. Because he says, I've been studying for three years. I thought I had time, but I didn't have time. I got through that. Now I want a little bit of time just to exhale. And I says, I get what you mean. And we kind of step back and let him start putting his CV together and preparing and looking at the different angles of finance where he wants to work. But at the end of the day, there has to be a connection between what you have studied and what you now move into the field of operation. And we have been teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching for years in church. And so we've been giving you the assignments, we've been giving you the information, but it seems that people just want to take the teachings and the preachings and the teachings and the preachings, and they don't want to apply that to anything to grow the body of Christ. You and I are intricate parts to every ministry house that we go into. Every members are, are intricate parts to the building of that church. That church looks like how it does because you have done or you have not done what you're supposed to do in that house. Uh, I know I may sound like I'm preaching. I'm just trying to push my voice to, to make it make a noise. <laughs> Because if I speak softer, you may not be able to understand me. So I'm not preaching, I'm just talking. And so if you want to interject at any time, I can't see the messages. So just let me know, just throw your hands up. Because everyone has an assignment. Every single person that walks through that door has an assignment when they come in. It's for you to seek out assignment. The problem that we've had over the years, we as ministers and leaders can recognize giftings on you. That's a big difference. There are giftings that you may have, and we can recognize your gift. You have a gift of singing. You have a gift of preaching. You have a gift of communication. You have a gift of administration and so on and so on. Those are different. 
Your assignment is something that God gives to you and you have to find out what your assignment is. So seeking the Lord in prayer after you find him in the secret place, meditate on his word. And by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, you will discover the assignment of God on your life. I know some of you are saying he hasn't even read a scripture, but go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. We're going to get there. It says, let us look to the scriptures and try and find out an assessment of how we get to this place of assignment. So God has a specific assignment for your life. And this is how he denotes it the, to the builder. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, you know this scripture, for I know the thoughts I have. I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a further hope. Okay, so he's got an expectation and he knows where he's planned for us to go. Go to Psalms chapter 139, and we're going to look at 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. Uh, I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it well. So even before you landed here on earth, God knew you whilst you was in the womb, pro-life, right? And so because God knew you, he had assigned something to you. And this is why I say at the beginning of what I was saying, that every one of us has an assignment in our lives. And we should sign almost like a contract when you join that ministry to say, I found what my commitment is to God, my assignment is, and this is my assignment. And so between yourself and the pastor, the pastor is supposed to be working through all of the assignments that every member has to ensure that before they move on to the next church or before they move on to glory, they fulfill their assignments or die in the process doing it. Amen. And I know you ought to be saying amen. So there is a work for all of us to do. So it's the task driven assignments are task driven if you are sent uh for instance i was speaking to a friend of mine i was in bedford with pastor daniel brown on friday so after coming from um, derby my son and i we stopped off uh, to visit pastor daniel brown uh, good friends of pastor um, spence also and we spent just the whole evening talking and it, it was interesting because uh, we started speaking i was sharing with him when my dad came to this country in the 50s he was asked by uh, uh, the bishop at the time that he was under. We lived in Lee in London. And um, he and my mom was asked to go to Manchester and start a church. So in those days, it wasn't like they had sorted the house out for your, your job and everything else. They didn't do none of that. They just said, we want you to go and start a church. So my dad, on his faith, on the bishop's word, stepped out, went to Manchester and started a church church grew and it was doing quite well and then uh, the bishop said to my father i want you to go to rugby and start a church so my dad was off again in those days you didn't ask questions you just got on and you dealt with the assignment that you were given by the bishop because obviously my dad was a preacher he started as an evangelist in america he was baptized in the lake Okeechobee in in florida and he went back to Jamaica, evangelizing, came to England, and then he went into pastoring. So he went to Jamaica, into uh, rugby, and he started this church, and the church started to grow. The problem he had is he couldn't sell the house in Manchester. So they struggled. My dad says in his testimony that uh, he experienced everything but going to jail in rugby. So he had losses and everything like that. Eventually, long story cut short, he had to go back to Manchester. When he went back to Manchester, he had left the organization and started a new organization. So he gave the rugby church to another pastor and uh, started a new church because he couldn't go back to the other church that he had started. And so he started that work. And I was that was when we went with father because I was born in this small country and this small city of rugby. And we were raised in Manchester. And so he was sent on assignment, but he was the assignment. You can be sent 
undeployed to certain things. If America, if there's a war somewhere, you can be sent on assignment to go and deal with that task. The household fly, let me give you this analogy. The household fly is superior to any bird that you can think of, any bat or any bee. According to a British scientist, a household fly can make six turns a second, hover, fly straight up, fly straight down, fly backwards, do somersaults, land on a ceiling, and perform various other show of maneuvers. <laughs> that sounds like a bad fly. Uh, I think I've only seen one fly movie. Most of them other ones are spider, but that's a bad fly. Uh, in another setting, we might use a different term, but flies are also loaded with sensors all over the place. So they have so many sensors. If you ever tried to kill a fly, they know you're coming before they know you're coming because they're so aware and they have so many indicators. In, in addition to their compound eyes, which permit panoramic imagery and are excellent in detecting motion. The moment you move for it, it's gone. Flies have wind sensitive hair and antennas all over their body, this little small body. They have, uh, they are, uh, have three light sensors called oxyels and on the top of their head, uh, which tell them which way to go, roughly two thirds of the fly's entire nervous system is devoted to processing visual, visual images. In a minute uh, thing, as a fly, if God puts so much wisdom into ordinary house flies, imagine what it means to do and to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. We are fearfully, wonderfully made in his image. Every church, faith city, not excluded, Every church supposed to be operating at its maximum because of you and me. If God can put that much in a little fly, how much more you and I? And so when we learn to understand our assignments, our churches can, in fact, Pastor Junior Spence, the, the pressure would be taken off you and I as leaders and everybody will be picking up their task, picking up their cross. And so that um, faith city can resemble a kingdom house that God would be proud of somebody say, amen. And so we were created with an assignment in mind. A big part of our assignment is intended to solve problems. Birds are important to the ecosystem in many ways. They pollinate flowers and disperse seeds. Ants help keep the environment clean. They act as decomposers um, by feeding on organic waste. Bees pollinate the flowers, etc. Mechanics solve problems. Dentists solve tooth problems. Lawyers solve legal problems. Mothers solve birthing problems. Accountants solve financial problems. Teachers solve knowledge problems. Pastors solve spiritual problems. Evangelists solve outreach problems and prophets solve spiritual hearing problems. Apostles solve building church representation problems. So what is the assignment that God has given you to solve? If you look and analyze in your church outside of the members meeting and the leadership meetings that say, now we're going to focus on what we're going to do as the world is changing and the models are changing. People are choosing to come to church once every four weeks, some once uh, twice a month. And there are the, the few that are constant. And so you can't please everybody. There are connectors, people that only connect online, and there are people that gather. And so we've got to please these two bodies of people. There are some, it doesn't mean that they care any less. It's frustrating to leaders because you don't come and we put on these programs, they get preachers to come in and singers to come in and all these kinds of things. I'm almost 
rolls through because I know our time. But there are programs that we set and people don't come to attend and it feels like it's a loss. It seems like it's a loss, but you have an assignment. So fix the problems that you see that other people don't see. It's not their assignment if they don't see it. Only the ones that see it, you've got to see. We would have more administrators working in the church if people stood up to their assignments to fulfill the purposes on their lives we would have more success in our churches more singers on our praise team because they would say we can see the depletion of how many people is now singing um so so let us help i know i don't have the greatest voice but i know that people can work on you the more you do it the better you come and so you are a solution to somebody this means you are a reward to somebody. Somebody needs you. They need you, church. I'm speaking to every one of us. Somebody needs you. Somebody wants you. You are a, necess a necessity to the body of Christ. So Moses was needed as a leader to the children of Israel. Naomi was needed as a care caretaker. You are needed to the body of Christ to fulfill the assignment that God has placed on your life. Now, I asked the question to myself, what's the difference between ministry and assignment? What is the difference? Because many people confuse the two and can confuse the two. They're easily confusable. I used to teach from, I was a Sunday school teacher many years ago, I think in the late uh, 90, in the, in the early 90s. Um, I used to teach of the GSM formula to understanding your ministry, uh, the key to understanding your ministry. I call it the G, S, M, G for Gary, S for sugar, Steve, uh, and M for ministry. So the GSM is the gift, your service, and it becomes your ministry. So there are things that are constant needed in church, things like moderators, things like musicians, singers, and you know the rest. And so there are, their call was to serve God in whatsoever capacity he asked of them. They were called to meet the needs. Sometimes that meant they were leading worship. Other times they were stacking chairs. The assignment was flexible. Their commitment to the call was not. So ministry is a commitment to the call. It's not flexible, but your assignment can be flexible. I hope you got that. Your assignment can be, can you stack the chairs away today? That's an assignment. But ministry is, I am constant in my position, in my role. I'm a member of the intercessory department. And so how do you know you are an intercessory warrior? You have a burden and a caring for people's lives and you want to pray. You, have, you obviously have to be able to pray. You obviously have to have a heart to pray for people to carry. And you're not somebody that carries people's business around to other people. You carries people's business to the Lord in prayer. It's a big difference. And if you have that caring heart, you have that intercessory heart. And so you don't join the choir because you're an intercessor. You join the intercessor's department because you are a prayer warrior. And you pray. It doesn't mean that you can't sing on the praise team because you have a great voice. But also it means that your consistent goal is a commitment to the intercessor prayer intercessory department that's a ministry singing with the praise team is a ministry but an assignment is i have got to do this god sent me to this church to do this to fulfill this task in your lifetime some of us need to go away today and spend some time with the lord he's obviously spoken to us before maybe you've forgotten maybe you've subsided from it maybe you thought no i may not be the one but if the task has not yet been done it's still time to do it fulfill the task in your lifetime before it's too late so simply put it is a position taken to severe to serve sorry a local church a body of kingdom house one regularly attends and commit to both the house its leadership and the department chosen to give you serve give your service to help the church and so we need to fulfill the assignment what does the assignment in the bible mean an assignment is a mission or a position to which a pers person is assigned we each have a position in the body of christ and i'm closing on this
and a distinct mission to fulfill. And God has perfectly equipped us to succeed in his assignment. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Charlie, Charlie.